All right, everyone, welcome. Um, I haven't gone over the tests yet, uh, but I'll have those done, I hope, by Tuesday. That's my goal, um, by next class. And then, um, and also, there's still some people who need to take them. So if you still need to take the test and you haven't, um, definitely reach out to me by email. I'd, I'd like to have everyone taking them by, uh, you know, maybe by, by Monday. But uh, email me if you still need some more time. That's, that's totally OK as well. Um, uh, and then uh, it may be on Tuesday, if there's some questions, we can definitely go over anything that you guys had questions about from the test. Um, but for now, I wanted to ask, did you guys have any questions on the homework about random variables? And if you kind of understood what that concept was about, if it made sense, if the assignment made sense? Uh, just a show of hands, how many of you got to finish, complete the random variables homework and, and how, how did you find it? Was it pretty straightforward or any, any confusing parts? Oh, okay, expected value, yes. Uh, excellent, I, yeah, let's go, let's go over that. Uh, that. That's the goal for today for sure. Okay, excellent, so that gives us, a, and we'll have plenty of time to go over it. It's actually a really nice concept. And believe it or not, it's one of the, um, um, very pr like practical and, and interesting concepts to know about that, that could could impact if you decide to play the lotto or something like that. Um, okay, so let me share my screen here. Um, Oh, on, on the homework? Yeah, you, you uh, um, yeah, you, you definitely don't need to get 100% um, on the homework, um, but I definitely want you to try to do all of them. Uh, and, and ask about, you can, you know, ask, we can go over any of them in class. I think that's a great thing we can try to do. Uh, okay, so just a quick reminder. So today we're gonna continue talking about random variables and uh, expectation. Um, uh, Archer, I'm not sure, what, what did you mean by that? The last, uh, does RV mean to show up? Sometimes I can't see. Hmm. What happened here? Oh, oh, transform. The trans. Uh, uh, RV stands for uh, random variables, and uh, transforming R means for stand, uh, transforming random variables. Hmm. Some reason I can't uh, let me see pause. Oh, uh, yeah, show work on, on on everything that you know. Uh, I think you need to kind of do. Some of them you definitely need to show do work. So whatever you did work with, uh, definitely show it. Um, okay, so uh, uh, just a quick recap. So very quick recap. Uh, what is a, uh, we're gonna mostly focus for now on discrete uh, random variables.
So, oh, uh, don't, yeah, if you finish them and you don't have the work for some of them, uh, or you didn't need to show the work, if you ever solve a problem on the homework and you don't need to show the work, um, uh, uh, that's okay. Uh, but if some of them, like, especially with these, with the expectation, I think it's hard to do it without showing all the work. Um, so for those, just kind of make a little chart and kind of you know, include that in your write-up. Um, but you don't, don't have to go back and, and redo. Okay, so just a quick re re recap. What is a discrete random variable? Um, I'm gonna highlight random variable. So uh, whenever I see this term, um, it, it refers to this idea where we have, um, so X uh, represents um, a set of countable outcomes with associated probabilities. And the word countable here just means uh, can be put in a list. So um, uh, anything that you can put in a list, any set that you can put in a list and make sure that you guarantee that you get all of them, that's called countable. So for example, um, uh, and it's, it's very related to the term discrete, uh, like kind of units that you can list out one by one. It could be infinite. I don't wanna just say that a, a discrete random variable has to be a finite set of outcomes. Like rolling a dice, you only have the outcomes one through six, right? So that's a finite set of outcomes. But there are, there are random variables that are still considered to be discrete, but they go on forever. Like for example, um, you know, one random variable that you might measure is like how many people uh, can, um, you know, uh, uh, enter a Starbucks in a given hour, um, or how many people can grab a coffee in a given hour. Um, you know, that could potentially be any number you can think of. I mean, of course, there's a limit to it, how many people there are on Earth, but uh, um, uh, mathematically, there's no, there's no restriction on that. So uh, uh, countable just means that you can list out all the numbers. As opposed to continuous, uh, it turns out that if you're talking about any number from 0 to 1, even though that number is, there's also an infinite number of points on that interval, it actually turns out uh, it's impossible to list them out in some sort of organized way and guarantee that you get every number. So we can talk more about that later, but, um, and mostly what we'll be working with are finite outcomes, a set of finite outcomes. But just kind of wanted to give you the correct definition. Okay, so um, whenever I see this, there's two ways of thinking about this. One is as a kind of a probability distribution. Well, actually, uh, as, it, you know, it's the same, Random variable is almost the same thing as a probability distribution. So they're essentially uh, just a way of describing this, the set of outcomes and the associated probabilities. So you can have a graph or you can have a chart. And I like both approaches. So um, x is the outcome, little x is the outcome, and P of little x is the probability of the outcome. So we have uh, rolling a die, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and the probability is one, six, one, six, one, six, one, six, one, six, and one, six. So this is an example of a random variable. Because when you roll a die, it's a uh, there's a random outcome and each outcome has an associated probability. And the outcome is called little x. And capital X, the script X, represents the whole, uh, the whole object of rolling a die. It has all of the information about every outcome and each probability. And we can also draw it as, we can visualize it as a graph. And this graph is really simple. It's gonna be just a, a bar graph. 
or kind, it's kind of like a, a, a histogram or a frequency plot where we have each outcome, one, two, three, four, five, six, and we have uh, a, bars of even height that represent the probability of each outcome. This is probably what it says. Okay, any questions uh, so far? Uh, what is the, uh, uh, Lily asks, what is the word that starts with uh, D of rolling? Uh, uh, Lily, which, which part? Oh, hang on. Distribution. Oh, oh, this word, yes. That is a probability distribution. Just distribution, sorry. So we have the chart. Yeah, sorry about that. Then I think I'm I probably was still misspelled it. Um, we have the uh, visualization of it, and we have the chart. Um, so whenever you hear random variable probability distribution, they're essentially interchangeable. Um, and there's kind of the visual way of thinking of it, of, of seeing it, and, and both are nice. Uh, any questions on, on this so far? Let me just pull up the participants window. Okay, excellent. So we went over this last time. Um, I just want to review it so that you have this real feel comfortable with this concept. For a long time, when I studied stats, uh, they kind of didn't emphasize like what what prob what random variable was because I was I was kind of confusing random variable with like the outcomes themselves. But the random variable, once people talk about it, they talk about the whole thing. So this entire object is a random variable. So what does it mean to have the expected value of a, a random variable? So I'm gonna write this here. So we can do things, we can calculate interesting things with, with random variables, and we can do interesting things to that. So one thing we can do is um, we can find the expected value of a, a random variable. And it turns out it's really easy to do it if you um, uh, uh, do it with a chart. And what is this? So um, the expected value of the random variable, now I'll, I'll just kind of calculate it over here. I'm gonna copy and paste this. It's kind of like a, a, a nice way to think of it is it's essentially um, a weighted average of all of the possible outcomes weighted by kind of how likely they are. Nope. So, um, just to make sure that when everyone's comfortable when I talk about weighted average, um, just give me a thumbs up if you're comfortable with weighted average and maybe a no or a thumbs down if you're not quite sure what I'm referring to when I talk about that. And there's one really good example. Does anyone know a really good example of something that's a weighted average that you guys calculate in school all the time? And there's something related to this class as well. Exactly, Archer, uh, Diana, yes. Uh, anyone wanna share? A, uh, Dan, do you want to show what you said? Um, the GPA. Yeah. How is that a weighted average? What 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 kind of what do they what do they weight differently? Um, I don't actually know because we don't have to calculate ours yet. But I think you just take the average of you know all the grades you get and you add extras for like honors classes and then you get a number. Yeah, exactly. So it's like not all classes are weighted equally. So you don't just take all your grades, like let's say like a, a is like four or something, a B is three, like that, something like that. You don't just take four plus three, whatever, and then divide by the number. Some classes might have a little bit of an extra weight. So you maybe multiply, like rather than um, just adding up all of them and dividing by the total, you actually multiply each class 
by the percentage that you want it to um, be weighted. In particular, in this class, and in the last math class I taught, Math 96, um, uh, we have a weighting for the grades as well, right? I do something with like uh, the midterms or the exams is, uh, uh, I forgot what it is, like 60%. Uh, the final is like 30%, um, and the homework is 10%. So whatever grade you get on each of those, I multiply it by the appropriate percent, or the percent is really just a fraction out of 10, and I group that all together. So this way, the midterm, your midterm average has more weight than your final exam average, your overall midterm average. So uh, now that we've kind of gone over that idea, does that feel more comfortable, like what a weighted average is? Nice. So it's a really useful concept. And really what expected value is, it's just a fancy word for essentially what we do when you calculate the grade for this class or, or any sort of other class where where different things have different weights. So these are kind of like what I think of as my outcomes. These are like my test scores. So I can get a one, two, three, four, five, or six. And the probability is just like kind of in the syllabus, I told you 10% homework, 60% uh, uh, midterm and 30% final. This is like, these are like, uh, you know, percents really, one six is some sort of percent. These are percents that I assign to each outcome. And so what the expected value is, is um, just multiply x times p of x and make a new column. So I'm going to do that over here. This is just going to be um, 1, 6, 2, 6, 3, 6, 4, 6, 5, 6, and 6, 6. And then the expected value is equal to the total. And I'm going to write here the sum, this is how we write it. We write capital E and we put a square bracket and it's kind of like a, a the, the represents that it's a function of this kind of object called the random variable. So E of, it's a little bit too aggressive here, E of X, the expected value of this kind of random experiment is equal to the sum of x times p of x. This is just a fancy letter, sigma. It's a symbol that represents add up everything in this column. And underneath it, I'm going to write overall uh, outcomes. So underneath it, I write overall outcomes x. So that's just a way to say add up everything in the column. And that is the expectation. And so if we add them all together, we see that we get um, one, uh, you know, one plus two plus three plus four plus five plus six, because everything has the same denominator, six. And what do you guys think is going to come out to? If you had to guess, like if you just roll a dice over and over, um, like let's say you roll a dice a hundred times, right? Or okay, let me take it back. Let me, let's say you roll a dice, the same dice, 600 times, and you look at the, what, what number you got each time. What would you expect to get really close to, that, that average value? If you take the average of all of those values that you got. What do you guys think? Message me in the chat. I'm curious what you get. Well, uh, it would be, it's got to be between 1 and 6. Right? Because the lowest you can get is one and the highest you can get is six. If you roll the dice over and over and over, um, what's kind of the average outcome? Nice, nice Dimitri. Uh, Gabby, very, very good. I like, I like your idea. Can you be more precise? Not exactly that number. Nice. So Gabby suggested three, A suggested four. And Dimitri was right in between there. Nice, 3.5, exactly. So, and we can calculate that. And that makes sense, right? Because every number is equally likely. So like if you're thinking about one and six, well, the number in between one and six, the one that's right in the middle is 3.5. The one in between two and five, those are equally likely. So th they would balance out to also kind of give you an average 3.5. Uh, and three and four is also uh, uh, 
3.5. So um, if you add up all these numbers, what do we have? Um, uh, this will be 5, 6, 10, uh, 21 divided by 6, which is equal to 3.5. Very good question. So I want to ask, why are we multiplying P of X by the outcome? So let me give you an example, what I mean by weighted average. So in this class, uh, we have your, uh, your test score or uh, you know, um, category score, category score. And we have uh, the weight. So, um, uh, so let's say we had was it sixty percent or six out of ten? Let me just do it as a fraction. Six out of ten, uh, three out of ten, and one out of ten. And your category score. Let's say you got like a eighty percent on the midterms. 90% on the uh, final and 100% on the, um, on the uh, uh, homework, okay? So to get your final, at, uh, your final like grade for the class, uh, you would multiply the, the, the outcome times the probability or times the weight of that outcome, right? Um, and one way to visualize this, like how, how you're getting the average here, one really neat way to think about it, like literally or, or kind of more concretely, is you can think of what's happening here is like, because they want to give them, this is, let's say the midterm, this is the midterm, and this is the uh, 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 final, this is the homework. What you're literally doing when you're multiplying by these weights is you're thinking about um, uh, taking an average of these numbers, but some of them are repeated more often than others. So this is similar to an average like this. It's similar of counting 80 plus 80 plus 80 plus 80. I'll write it out. So you have six of these plus uh, three of these, and then plus 100, one of those. And then you divide that by 10. Okay. So that kind of represents, you're taking an average of the three numbers, but you're not just taking a straight average of 80, 90, and 100, you're weighting them by how much weight you want, uh, how often you want them to kind of appear out of 10 times, or kind of multiplying them by this weight. So, uh, um, here in this example, uh, um, and this example, uh, it's it's a similar thing. I guess this example is a, a bit uh, this kind of the most basic example of a uh, expected value because each probability is actually, or each weight is exactly the same. So we can even just take an average of all the outcomes. And that, that's literally what we end up doing because uh, each outcome is equally likely. So on average, you'd expect to get 3.5. But let's imagine that this was not all one six. Like let's say, for example, it was a loaded die, right? So let's say that um, the probabilities were a little bit different. And one way you can think about it, and this is kind of the, maybe a, a better intuition, uh, that, that the question I post, posed about having 600 rolls, if you have 600 rolls, and you guys can message me in the chat, if you roll a dice, a fair dice, 600 times, roughly how many ones do you expect to see? Nice, exactly, 100. Uh, yeah, very good, those of you who responded. Um, and same thing for two, you'd expect to see if you roll a uh, 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 dice uh, 600 times, you'd expect to see 100 twos on average, or usually. Not exactly 100, but that's kind of roughly where you expect to be. Um, 
So kind of taking that perfect situation where the number of outcomes fits in perfectly with like each probability, you can calculate this, this idea of the expected outcome by taking the average of, of all of the outcomes uh, based on how many times you expect them to show up. And that's, uh, that's what's represented by multiplying the outcome times how often you expect it to show up um, and adding all of those together. Uh, did that answer that question um, about why are we multiplying P of X by the outcome? And I'm uh, happy to kind of, because that's a really key idea and something to think about there. Do you guys kind of see the connection between what I'm talking about with the kind of with the expected value and this idea of um, your uh, final grade for the class. Please give me a thumbs up if 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 you see the connection. Um, uh, and wait, and uh, and also uh, any question or, or if if. Uh... Awesome. Yeah. So. Expected value is really just a fancy way of saying take a weighted average of the outcomes weighted by how likely they are to show up. That's all. Um, and it has this really nice intuition that if you, you're you know, sitting there and doing this experiment a thousand times and you take the average, we're going to expect that we get really close to that number that we could have. Okay. Um, let me see what's next. Um, Ah, you know what, I, I actually, sh in my notes, in my pri prior notes, I actually went through that example of rolling, up. I went through the 600 rolls first and then I gave the formula. So I apologize, uh, did that a little bit out of order. Um, uh, let me also introduce now, because I introduced it here, uh, just talk a little bit about summation notation. Um, just so that, because I think we, we're going to see it again uh, later. And those of you might have, uh, in my Math 96 class, we might have done it previously, but I'm just going to go over it briefly again. Um, so uh, just to introduce this symbol, some of you might have seen it already. So this just means uh, it's a capital sigma. And what we do is we can describe adding things up that are kind of tedious to write out. So if we want to add up like the numbers um, uh, one plus two plus three plus four plus five, um, you know, you can just, this, this is not too bad. You can list them out. You can actually write that expression. But what if I want to add up numbers uh, one plus two plus three dot 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 all the way to 99 plus 100? And I don't want to include this dot, 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 because who knows what's in there. I want to have like a systematic way that I can express adding up things in a pattern, like in, in, in a sequential pattern. Uh, so what we do is we have this idea called summation notation. And the way it works is you put the sigma in here and you give me a starting number, a starting index. So I equals one to five. And this is just the, uh, the I kind of stands for index, but it's a dummy variable. It could be any letter that you want. And inside of the, like, the expression, it's kind of like, we don't write parentheses, but you can think of like uh, this expression is referring to something inside of it or next to it here. Um, we're going to plug this number in to, uh, to some function that will spit out these values. And the function happens just to be i itself. So the way to read this is, it's kind of like a computer program. Start off with this number, one, um, plug it in to this formula, and, and keep that on the side. So we have the number one. The next thing, after you go to one, you go up, you're going to go count up until you reach five. So then the next number is going to be two. You plug in two into this formula, it gives you the number two, and there you go, you have two. Um, and you keep doing that 
and you keep adding each number that you plug in from your index into after each, uh, after you plug in each index into that formula, you add it to what the previous result. And this should express adding up all those numbers in the sequence. Um, I'm going to write something over here. Do you guys agree that um, this is the same as if I were to do this? So the index goes from three to eight, but instead of just doing the formula or the, or the function i, I'm plugging the index into i minus two. Do you guys agree that these expressions express the same uh, summation? Any questions on, on what I wrote here? This one and this one. And this is a new notation. Yeah, yeah. So, so the index thing, this is kind of like, uh, uh, this is a counter. It tells you count i goes from one to five by integers. So it goes one, two, three, four, five. For each i that you get, plug it into the thing, the formula that's next to it and add it to what you got previously. And at the end, you're gonna add them all together. Like that's gonna be your final answer. So when we work with here, we have, first we have one, then we plug in two, then three, then four, then five, and then we add them all together. That's all it's And over here, you can kind of see how, you know, you can, you can express the same thing, but you can change the indexes and the formula, the, the formula a little bit, but still get the same answer, right? What happens when I plug in the number three? Here I'm going from three to eight. So I'm gonna start off with three, and I'm gonna add, uh, my index is gonna go from three, four, five, six, seven, Oh, sorry, not eight, uh, three to six, my bad, three to seven. I miscounted it, yeah. So from three to seven, when I plug in three, I get one, when I plug in four, I get two, and I'm gonna keep adding up each thing that I get from the formula until I reach, when I plug in seven, I'm gonna be adding five. So they're just two different ways of expressing just this summation. And it's obviously overkill for adding up one, two, three, four, four, five, but if you want to express adding up one to 100, it's very convenient because all you need to do, what's the only thing I would need to change from the, from the expression above? If I just I want to add up the consecutive integers from one to 100. It's the only part of the formula I would need to change. Does it become a lot bigger or? Exactly. The top number five just turns into 100. That's really the power. That's why we do this, because it makes expressing a, a, a really long pattern that you don't want to write down uh, uh, much more convenient. Uh, it makes it expressing a long summation of adding a bunch of things together a very convenient. So i equals one, and we put the symbol. Um, those of you who have done some computer science, this is just a, a, a notation. This is an example of a, of a for loop. You go, you go from start from start to finish, and you do, you know, you do the formula inside next to the summation symbol. You plug each index into that, and then you add it to the previous item, and that's going to be your end result. Um, uh, you can do so. You know, you could do a lot of different things with this. You can add up any pattern. It doesn't need to be simply consecutive numbers. What if we wanted to add up uh, um, uh, 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 let me see here, the square numbers. What if I wanted to do something like this? Uh, uh, let, let me ask you guys what this would represent. So if I want to, uh, if I write something like this, some uh, i squared, i equals 50, to 100, uh, can you guys message me in the chat using dot, dot, dot? Like, what is, the, what is the pattern here? What does it look like? What are the numbers that you would actually need to write down to add this up? Any, 
and ask me if you're not sure at all. Let me know if you have no idea what I'm talking about, because if this is a new notation, I, I know sometimes it can be a little bit confusing. So if you, uh, if you're, uh, no, no, no decimals here required, but just integers. But the thing about the summation index, like the, these numbers, they're always ranging over integers. Whenever it's like I equals something to something else, that always, there's, it's always implied that you're just going up like from 50, 51, 52, 53, all the way to 100. It's, it's really a counting, uh, like a counting variable. So what would be the first thing that we would need to include in our summation that we would include, like that we would write down? Nice. Yeah. Uh, uh, we'll, we'll, uh, do you want to share what you said? No. Yeah. to the power of two plus 51 to the power of two and then I just did dot 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 99 to the power of two and plus 100. Power. Exactly like it's going to be really tedious I, I don't want to write everything out right that's the point that's why we do this that's why mathematicians say I want to talk about this thing but I don't want to write it out. <laughs> nice to meet you very good so this is going to be uh, 99 squared plus 100 squared. Awesome. Thank you, guys. That, that was that was great. Um, uh, and so, and sometimes if you see a pattern as well, you can think about how to write it in um, uh, in summation notation. Kevin, uh, uh, what, what, uh, what do you mean by that question? Is, is it okay for the answers to be one hundred? Like, is it okay? I don't. I think this is probably like a stupid question, but like huh. fifty squared. Like, obviously, it's like above 100 when you get the actual answer? Is that like okay that it goes above 100 because 100 is a sum? Yes, yes, yeah, okay. sum? Very, very good question, yes. So 100 is just part of the index, right? Whatever this thing is, this is a function of the index. So um, it doesn't matter, like for, uh, we're gonna be just adding up the outcomes or the, 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 you know, the function outputs of each index that we plug in. So what I mean by that is, um, and it doesn't matter what those, those values have nothing to do with like the index. The index just tells us how far to like, how many of them to add, but the actual function value, it could be anything, right? I can do, uh, just kind of show you an example. So let's say I equals seven to 10. This would be F of seven plus F of eight plus F of nine plus F of 10. So this is kind of the full format of like what this notation can do. You have your you have your counting like where you're starting, where you're stopping, and then you have the function or the expression that you're plugging the counting variable into, and then you're just adding up all of these outputs. So in in this example, the function was uh, x squared or i squared, and in this example, the function is just the number itself, just f of x equals x. Uh, is that uh, is that clear enough? Okay, awesome. Um, and uh, there's one more. Uh, uh, you know, th this notation is kind of like uh, you know similar to a little bit to factorial as well. Uh, um, kind of you know fa with factorial, we don't like uh, we don't want to write down the whole product starting with a number and going down. So we came up with a notation for it. So the, the idea is similar. Uh, and just like with factorial, there's, uh, you know, we saw there's some manipulations you can do with factorial that, that actually are, are quite simple. Like if you do like, like n factorial divided by n minus one factorial, you just get an n. So there's similar things you can do with summation. Uh, before we do that, I wanna show you one other thing. There's an abstract way of describing your index so when we, whenever they write i equals a number and goes to another number, that's very concrete. That's like a counting index. Go from object one to object five, like or number one to number five, and that's you're going to be plugging in those numbers into here. There's a more abstract way to do it, and I kind of did it already. Um, and when you do that, 
you're indexing over objects in a, in the, in, in a set. So here's a really simple way. Uh, uh, here, here's uh, an example. Uh, one thing I might do, how would you, um, if, I, if I wanted to, how would I calculate the average age of everybody in this class? What would I need to do? I would need to add up, take, find out, you know, ask each of you, what is your age? And then um, add up all of those ages, add up all of those numbers and divide by the total. Um, so, uh, um, and, you know, I'm not going to label, put, uh, you know, uh, uh, an, associate each student with a number, like a student ID. One the way I can express that is I can write it like this, the sum of, uh, if I want to find the total of all grades, not, not the average, let's say just the sum. I can say the sum over the students in math 119. So this is a set of objects. This is like the index set. Um, when it's written like this, the index set is a set of consecutive integers. But if when it's written like this, it's just a set of, ob a set of uh, elements. And what am I adding? I want to add uh, each student uh, is the age of the student. So this is kind of the the uh, the abstract way of doing it. Okay. So all this is is a fancy way of saying I'm going to add up every the age of all the students. Uh, this means uh, this is like x. This x is just a variable. It could it could be this. This means belongs to. So as any student that belongs to this set, I'm going to take their age. I'm going to take uh, take their you know their identifier, their name, and take the age of that student. And that's going to be the, the number that I get. I'm going to add up all those numbers. Um, so that's a very uh, 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 abstract way of just adding up all the ages. But that, does that make sense, that I, notation? Excellent. And you saw uh, we did that earlier. I, I kind of wrote that earlier when I was talking about um, uh, uh, expectation. And the reason we do this is it keeps us flexible, right? I can have this formula even if I don't know what the outcomes are. Yeah, oh yeah, Dan, good question. So, so this is the thing. Um, uh, when you're just, just, when you're summing over a set, um, uh, we don't use a notation going from uh, bottom to top, uh, like from a starting point to an ending point, because like the, the set of students, there's no, it's not like the set of integers where there's a starting and ending number. Um, we just don't know. I just say like adding over this index set. So I don't know uh, um, who's the lowest, who's the highest. There's no, there's no ordering on it. It's just a collect collection of, of, of elements. Um, uh, I could, like if I wanted to, so this is really convenient because a lot of times when we add things in the pattern, we're adding them like uh, with a, like a, there's a way to index them uh, consecutively, essentially. Uh, if I wanted to, I could re represent the same thing above. I can write it like this. So every summation can be written in this sort of abstract way where you don't need to put a number on top. It could be x is an element of seven, the set seven, eight, nine, 10, and you're adding up f of x. Or instead of x, I could use the letter i. So when you talk about like adding up things over a set, we, we, we just kind of, it's just abstract a little bit. You don't need to have a starting number and ending number because that's, that's uh, uh, for a specific type of set that's just consecutive integers. Uh, then did that uh, clear up the question? Awesome. Um, okay, and there's one more comment I just want to make briefly about uh, expectation, uh, and then I'll sh show you some. Uh, well, actually, let me show you one more thing about uh, a summation, um, just to kind of uh, 
uh, get you thinking about the notation a little bit. And you see, it's a very useful thing to be able to, to know and talk about. Just, and it's, it's quite, uh, um, it looks complicated, looks a little bit intimidating, but it's, it's nothing really. It's just saying, add up a bunch of stuff, starting here, stopping here, and this is the pattern that you're going to, your pattern that you're going to use. That's it. very, very convenient. Um, so here's something that kind of reminds me of like some of the shortcuts or, or we saw with uh, 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 factorials. So do you guys agree with this? Uh, let me know if you agree with this or you have any objections or questions. So how about this one? Sum of i equal from one to n of f of i, is this equal to f of n plus sum uh, i equals one to n minus one of f of i? So give me a thumbs up if you feel like that this makes sense, this expression, you agree with it? Thumbs down if you're, or X if you're kind of uh, a little bit confused. <laughs> yes, there is this expression for a little bit. A little bit abstract, take a, take a few minutes to think about it. And Keep in mind when we were doing uh, factorials, how we thought about them, how the, that pattern, we were able to kind of write down some uh, you know, relations between like n factorial and n minus one factorial and stuff like that. Any volunteer want to try to explain what's happening here? And you'll see it's really, really simple. <laughs> like once you stare at it and try to parse what it means, you'll see, oh my God, that's, that's, that's not saying much. Any, anyone want to volunteer? Nice. Gabby, you, you want to uh, take a shot at it? <laughs> yeah, I could take a shot at it. So basically mm -hmm. the like left is just, you know, what we've been talking about, but then F of N, which is basically equal, like essentially what the, Thing on the left of the equal sign is because you're not really taking away anything that's what i've been kind of thinking i don't know if that's like completely right but yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. so you're very close so so let's just walk through it together what is um what's the first thing if you wanted to actually write this out like like this thing right it's a little bit abstract here but what would be the first thing that we would plug into f if we wanted to write this thing f of one right nice so this would be f of one plus f of two, and where does it stop? How far does it go? What will be the last thing in the summation? It would be f of n, exactly. So n is it's kind of like n factorial. When we wrote n factorial in the, in the last test, you know, it represented any number, but it, I thought of it as this actual number n. So it would go all the way up to f of n. But just kind of how um, uh, Ace mentioned here, like I, I really like she got all the way to 100 squared, but before 100 squared, there was 99 squared, just to show that it's like consecutive numbers. So before f of n, what would be the thing that we, we would actually add be, right before f of n? What number would be right there? Nice, exactly, uh, n minus one. So what we see here is this is really the same as f of n, just pick off the very last part of the summation and say, oh, it's f of n plus f of one all the way to f of n minus one, adding them all together. So we have an expression for that. If you wanna add things in order, it just means start with n equals one, sorry, not n, be careful, i is the indexing, n is an actual fixed number, uh, all the way to n minus one, and add up f of i. And it can be a little tricky what you're plugging in and what's, what, uh, 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 and what's on the top. And, and So the really important thing here is i is an indexing variable. 
it should never be written outside of a summation if, if it's if you have i equals one to n minus two to an abstract number but it's like, you know th this is like a fixed number this doesn't change but the i is always changing so i think of i as really as like my variable and n is in my mind when i see this type of expression i think of n as like a some big number like a thousand or something so that's all it's saying it's saying add up f of one to f of a thousand and it's equal to f of a thousand plus uh, f of one to f of nine nine nine. That's all. Is that um, a little bit clear? Awesome. And do you guys see the connection with what I was talking about? With uh, kind kind of it's, it's obviously permutations about multiplying. This is about adding a bunch of stuff. But do you guys see what I was talking about with uh, factorial? Does any, can anyone write down a a very similar expression with factorial uh, that kind of captures the same idea. There's one kind of like almost equivalent expression you could write, with, but but instead of addition, it's it's all multiplication. And you can use the kind of same pattern with factorial. Nice, Dimitri, not the plus sign, but we want to share what you wrote. N factorial nice. is equal to N minus one factorial times N. Yes. So N factorial is equal to, I'll write it in a different order, but N factorial times N minus one factorial. Exactly. Uh, but you know, this is about multiplication, the summation is about addition. And, and here the, uh, uh, we're not just adding uh, the numbers n, but we're adding functions of some index. Okay, uh, I wanted to just make a quick comment on uh, expectation. So uh, uh, one observation, this is kind of a stupid thing, but just kind of be aware of this um, so that you don't get confused with the word like expected value, like what you expect to observe. Um, can, if you roll a dice, can you ever actually get 3.5? No, right? So the, the dice rolls one through six. So expected value doesn't actually talk about a, a value that you can actually get. Expected value is really an average of the values that you expect to get over a long time or uh, weighted by their kind of probabilities. So it, sometimes it turns out that the expected value is actually going to be impossible to arrive at. Um, but it's still, not, nevertheless, a very, very useful thing to be able to calculate. And let's just quickly go over, with maybe like 10 minutes, uh, let's just quickly go over why it might be a useful thing to calculate, especially uh, when you get older and you know your friends say, let's go to Vegas or Barona or something like that. Um, hopefully, you'll make some smart decisions to you know, stay away from uh, games of chance. And we'll talk about why in a second. So, um, so this will be the last example. And I hope this will, uh, um, will give you some uh, background to do, to answer the question of the homework. If you need a few more days to do the homework, uh, that's totally fine if you want to turn it in on, on Monday. Um, but if you've done it already, I mean, just turn it in whenever. So in roulette, uh, it costs one dollar to play. Um, uh, there's eighteen black, eighteen red, and two green. I believe those are double, like zero and double zero. Um, and, you know, the marble can land on anywhere on the roulette board. So with equal chance. So assume you play red. What is your expected outcome?
So to answer these kind of questions about what do you expect to happen if you were to play this on, like on average, what would you expect to happen uh, with this game if you play over and over? Um, you have, first have to think about what is the random variable. So let x be the random variable. That represents um, the payoff of your strategy. Strategy play red. And then we'll see. There's a slightly different approach you can take, but um, this is a nice way to think about it. So, like. Uh, this takes into, takes into account the uh, um, the cost of the game and the win. So we can we can write it like this. So we can do it. Make a chart x little x p of x. And over here, I'm just going to say what is what is the event. Um. So uh, what is what are the events that can happen when you roll, uh, when you do one spin of the roulette? What are the possible outcomes that you think you have? What, what can, what are, yeah, uh, exactly. Gabby yeah, said red, black, or green. So these are the events. You can have a red, black, or green. And each event, actually will correspond um, to a, uh, um, a payoff. So if you roll red, um, oh, by, by the way, I should mention, um, uh, do you guys know what happens when you win red or black or, uh, on roulette? Do you guys know what happens? You get, uh, they give you double your money. So, so sometimes people do this really dangerous thing where they, you know, they lose some money on roulette. Um, then they, they, they try to make it back by going double or nothing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there, also, you can choice you, in roulette, you can also choose a specific number, but you can also play just red or just black. But yeah, if you play a specific number, you'll, you'll, just because it's much rarer, they, they, reward, they give you a bigger, much bigger reward. And because um, of the green spaces, red and black's not actually 50%, so it's worse odds for you. Exactly, that's right. So, um, uh, so uh, when you win, let me just mention here, when red, it's you return even a dollar. So if uh, red hits, then your overall winnings, so take how much you win, you get $2 back, but you spent $1 to play. So your overall winnings are $1. If black hits, then you lose one dollar because you cost one dollar to, to play. If green hits, you um, also lose a dollar. And it's okay that these um, these outcomes in the random variable happen to be the same number. Uh, essentially, the well, you know, you if you were to make another chart, you would add the probabilities here. Um, but this is going to be uh, 18 over 38. That's the chance of getting a red. This is also 18 over 38. And the last one is 2 out of 38. Because remember, uh, there's 18 black, 18 red, and 2 green. So there's overall 38 different outcomes you can uh, 
So if you find the expected value here, what you get is one multiplying p of uh, x times p of x, you get one times 18 out of 38. Another way to think of this is if you were to play this game 38 times, 18 times you would win a dollar, and the other 20 times you would lose a do dollar. So this is minus one. And I'm going to also do minus one times two out of 38. And putting up all those together, you get um, negative two out of 38, which is about uh, negative 0.05. Um, and this is where it gets a little tricky, right? Because uh, uh, what you see is that if you play this game over and over, on average, you're losing about five cents a game. Now you might not notice it because sometimes you're winning, you know, sometimes you'll win, you'll double your money, and sometimes, uh, or you double, you'll double your bet, and sometimes you'll lose your bet. Um, and it's hard to notice that you're going to be, like every time you're playing, you're slowly uh, uh, going to be losing a little bit of money each time. Uh, so in the homework, you get to analyze a few more games, um, but uh, um, uh, the general idea is that you don't really want to play games, uh, ga games of chance that have a negative expectation. Uh, another thing, another just last comment that I, another way to calculate this is you can actually calculate the winnings uh, here instead of doing one negative one, one negative one, you can do you can win two dollars. Uh, sorry, you can win. Um, uh, yeah, you get two dollars. You get zero dollars. You get zero. So you're going to two zero zero. Calculate the expectation of kind of like what you get back, um, and then subtract the cost. And that would be another way of doing it. There's different approaches, but I I like the approach that kind of considers the overall outcome, including the cost in this uh, in this random bird. All right. Are there any questions on this concept? Did that make sense? Thumbs up if you feel pretty comfortable with, uh, with this idea. And also if you will hesitate next time, well, uh, I don't know if I have been, but uh, you, you would not jump to play roulette. Or you know a game uh, is, this is, all the games basically have this, but uh, um, definitely slot machines, they have like an expectation of like a very, very low negative number. Uh, so like you play, you feel like, you know, some people, you see some people win big, some people, uh, most people just lose a little bit, right? Uh, but overall, uh, the casino makes money. You know, that's they, they, they make a lot of money off the game. So, um, okay, that's it for today. Um, you yeah. know, uh, if you need any extra time to finish the homework, because we just went over it today, uh, let me know. Um, uh, and if you need to still take the test, uh, please let me know. But otherwise, I'll see you guys on Tuesday. Bye. Thank you. Have a nice weekend. You too. See you, see you next Tuesday. Okay, see you guys. Hello.